Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. How do we get into the outdoors? How do we take these battle-proven techniques, features, and functions and spiral them into the hunting industry because there's so much crossover there? Really, it's about opportunity. The longer and more comfortable you are, the longer you're going to stay out. The longer you're going to stay out, and if you know your areas and you've done your yeah. scouting, you're going to have more success. 22, we launched the Skyfall mm -hmm. program, which was specifically designed for you know being on skyline or in a tree for breakup. So yeah. really back into, you know, tree stand whitetail hunting. So we will have a women's line again this summer in 2023. There's gonna be a lot of people that are super happy about that. Last year we actually brought a fishing specific line, bamboo hoodies, um, a lot of different shirts with net gaiters built in, SPF, quick dry, um, hot weather type stuff. It was very well received. Yeah. Another thing that we're, we'll release this um, fall is uh, waterfowl. The pattern's called flyway. We've thrown out a few sneak peeks. Um, it'll be ready to go late summer mm -hmm. with, you know, waterfowl, fish, all the different variations of hunt, um, lifestyle. It's been a busy couple years, even though COVID slowed things down, we didn't slow down at all. Today, we're going to be talking about the Ruger Security 9 pistol. It's ideal for everyday carry and self-defense. The Ruger Security 9 has really quickly become my go-to pistol. It's simple, it's affordable and reliable, but most importantly, it's really fun to shoot. The Ruger Security 9 family has a textured glass fiber nylon grip, giving you a secure and comfortable hold of the pistol even in adverse conditions or with sweaty palms. If you like a solid mid-sized pistol, the standard model weighs in at 23.8 ounces and has a four inch, one in 10 twist steel blued barrel. This pistol fits nicely in your hand, especially for someone who has small hands like myself. A compact version runs on a 10 round flush fitting magazine or a 15 round extended magazine. You can go online to Ruger.com to check out all of the options available in the Security 9. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. I'm here at the Wild Sheep Foundation National Convention at the Cryptech booth with Justin Sparks. And Justin, you have been with Cryptech literally as long as I can remember. Like how long have yeah. you been invested in this brand? Pretty much since the beginning. Yeah. Um, I met Josh and Butch actually uh, through a personal friend. Um, we were doing uh, a guide and outfitter thing um, and the company, you know, Butch and Josh had reached out to us and talked to us about gear and so they sent us a bunch of gear in the early, early days and yeah. I got it all and went and met with them and ever since I met with them, I've just, you know, been working with them and, uh, you know, in the beginning I started consulting a little bit and it was a short period of time where I was, we were so busy, they needed so much stuff. Um, I jumped on full time. So it's been almost 11 years. So what's your like official title? Right now I'm vice president of operations, okay. but I've done about everything inside of Cryptic. Yeah. Sales, pro staff, e-commerce, marketing, product dev. I did a lot of product dev in the early days. Okay. Um, so yeah, I've done just about everything at Cryptic. And you guys are constantly evolving. I mean, you went like uh, Butch is from originally from Alaska. Yep. So he's like born and bred outdoors. And then obviously the battlefield of the backcountry, him and Josh serving together, yep. you know, really has like this iconic American dream behind it where you take two men that have devoted their lives to serving country. Um, it, and they had this dream while they're overseas fighting for our freedoms that they wanted to come home and start this grassroots effort. And it's just blossomed into what it is today. Yeah, I mean, it was really cool. Butch is an Idaho boy. He grew up in Nampa, and that's why we relocated back yeah. to Idaho. And when he came out of the military, he went to Alaska. And so part of what him and Josh um, would dream about was how do we get into the outdoors? How do we take these battle proven techniques, features and functions and spiral them into the hunting industry mm -hmm. because there's so much crossover there. Yeah. Um, and it's, you know, it's been very well received. We've, you know, we always are going a thousand miles an hour, as you know, and so many exciting things going on and great partnerships with people like you mm -hmm. and others in the industry and great companies. And mm -hmm. we're just, you know, very fortunate to be, you know, involved in in such a great industry. Mm -hmm. And I feel really blessed to 
have kind of watched the brand grow as well. I, my first sheep show, um, I believe, was Butch and Josh's first sheep show. It was actually mine and Butch's first sheep show. Okay, so, yeah. yeah. And I remember everybody, like, we just all came in this at the same time, in yep. the same moment in space, and just to see the evolution of the brand and what you're doing to help conservation and our hunting legacy and heritage is really, um, it's, it's, it's almost... Um, incomprehensible if you were to look back you never would have imagined where you are today yeah it's incredible i mean that first year josh was still active duty yeah. actually that's how long ago it was and butch and i aaron schneider larry bartlett all came to this and uh, they were bringing dan catlin from the wildlife gallery was bringing butch's doll sheep down mm -hmm. and had it displayed here and so we ended up having a booth that shot that year and yeah. then we brought it here and that was the year that everything just kind of opened up. Yeah. I started doing the, I, the next couple of weeks. I did the Salt Lake show at the last minute. They had a booth, and um, it's been a it's been a wild ride. Yeah, it certainly has. And so you guys are in Idaho. Everybody that works for the company is a hunter, a, you know, a shooting sports enthusiast or a shooting professional. And meaning, you know, not just like on a like a USA shooting team, but like military, law enforcement. You guys have some of the most, I would say, respected pro staff and, and people that are actually wearing your gear and putting it to use in so many diverse applications, um, really testing, tried and true, showing how effective your patterns are and how much your gear performs. Yeah, in the early days it was just, you know, LE tactical, military, and hunt. Yeah. And we've expanded into so many marketplaces, you know, like fishing mm -hmm. and lifestyle, and we do have a very diverse group of people. We still have a, a very good tie back into spec ops and, you know, those special units. Um, Kevin Holland, which is probably one of the most decorated soldiers, mm -hmm. is part of our R&D mm -hmm. um, you know, from the tactical side. So it's really cool to have all these guys in these different areas bring feedback and then we're constantly trying to evolve our gear to be even better. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, you would think in this industry, you can't reinvent the wheel or the technology is as great as it's ever gonna get, but every year the textile industry just takes things to a new, new level. It's yep. really unbelievable, the the changes in fabrics, the yep. function um, of of any component of, of your clothing really has become so necessary. And you know, I look back at some of these old tapes and videos of guys out hunting in blue jeans and wool flannels. tops and yeah. flannels, and I'm mm -hmm. like, holy smokes, they were tough as nails yep. and also, slightly crazy i mean if you think about going on a mountain hunt today wearing cotton nobody would ever do that yeah, and people did that all the fabric. time i know yeah. exactly right cotton kills so um i love that you guys are all hunting so what like big hunts do you guys have coming up or what's cryptex big hunting focus this year you know just to kind of bring it back into into that yeah so we you know we try to hit each you know category but a couple of new exciting things 22 we launched the skyfall mm -hmm. program which was specifically designed for you know being on skyline or in a tree for breakup so yeah. really back into you know tree stand whitetail hunting mm -hmm. and it's been just overwhelming how well it received yeah. we've already th sold through some of our in line yeah. our lines it hit late summer so that's been really unique and and exciting because we're opening yeah. into a market that was never really our focus no for sure and i have some diehard whitetail hunters in the midwest and they're guys that live in a tree they shoot yep. big deer every year and they have seen that pattern and they're like you know this is the first time that we've actually taken a look at cryptech as something we want to wear whitetail yeah. hunting because this pattern just checks all those those boxes of what they're looking for for concealment in a tree and and before not that our patterns aren't fantastic i don't want to say that it's not that they are but this really just takes it to that next level yeah the unique part about it is you know there's so many things that are different in each environment mm -hmm. but there's some crossover and the pattern has amazing shelf appeal we just went to dallas last week and that was really the first chance that we'd had to mm -hmm you know, exhibit and show Skyfall in person to a bigger audience yeah. other than in few of the stores and, you know, direct to consumer and people were, were loving love it. it. Yeah, we actually, you know, there were so many people that walked away from here in our booth, you know, at these shows, as you know, we bring some floor merchandise where people can take and then we can also order and ship, you know, right to your mm -hmm. house. And our booth was slammed yeah. at Dallas. And so, you know, this is a really big focal point, um, just rolling into 23, just starting to get seen, you know, some steam. 
We also are bringing back our women's line. Yes, I'm so happy about this. It was just a brief pause, you guys. There was a little bit of stuff we had to iron out with the women's line, and yeah, we're back. Lo- logistically, COVID really messed a yeah. lot of things up on supply chain. Yeah. So we will have a women's line again this summer in 2023. Um, we also partnered with Sisterhood Outdoors, mm-hmm. and they will be selling our women's line as well. Um, it's going to be. There's going to be a lot of people that are super happy about yeah. that. Um, it'll be cut for women. Um, the same pieces that we had before with some additional other pieces. And, you know, so all the ladies out there that are listening, you know, we, we will have this pattern in women's. Well, I got to tell you, like some of my ladies' jackets are pretty rough after yeah, a few years after of, a few you know, years and especially un- as much as you hunt. as much as we hunt i'm like okay i'm ready you know i'm ready for this new stuff to come out plus i love the skyfall pattern yeah um you know yoki and i wore it a ton this fall um in the tree stand even on mount, our mountain hunts it you know especially if you're in some kind of rocky terrain yeah so you know not just in a tree but if you're alpine hunting or if there's any type of snow so some of those later seasons where you've got a little speckling of snow and, and you've got some um different types of um environmental conditions going on sure. this pattern was spot on and re- especially we loved it yeah it was just it was it said. was awesome this year. We had a lot of sheep killed in this this yeah. year. Dan Blankenship from you know Sheep Mountain Outfitters, um, he guided in it all year this year. Jared um, Lyle from Hunt and Fool, mm-hmm. he ran it during his sheep hunt. So it's really spanned. A, you know when people are getting out and using it in the sagebrush mm-hmm. and some of the darker timbers, um, the you know reception of it and the feedback has been incredible. Yeah, no, super excited about that. So you guys are also, you know, last year you launched fishing. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not a big angler, um, but there's a lot of people out there that spend a lot of time on the water. You know, talk a little bit about where you guys have gone with fishing, because I know the water is like Josh's thing. Yes. So fishing was an initiative that we talked about for a long time. We kind of soft launched it, but last year we actually brought a fishing specific line, Mm -hmm. bamboo hoodies, um, a lot of different shirts with net gaiters built in, SPF, quick dry. Um, hot weather type stuff we also brought some board shorts and some fishing shorts and then two pairs of pants which is the Laguna and the Mojave Um, and it was very well received Um, Yogi wears your shorts all the time my dad actually makes fun of him because it'll be like he's the guy when it's snowing outside he's still (laughs) in his shorts and you're like in Wyoming, now that gets what are you a little doing? cold now, huh? <laughs> this is time to put pants on. Yeah. But the shorts are super comfortable, and, you know, for him, he really liked the, the flexibility that he had of being able to regulate body temperature. And, and it, even in a hunting application, you know, especially if we're rifle hunting and it's hot, we're not looking for that, you know, super extra concealment because I can shoot a little farther away. And, yeah. you know, those shorts, are they were awesome for him. Yeah, I actually hunted in one of the pants this year called the Mojave. It came in a beetle color, which is kind of a greenish um um, color and I sistered it with the transitional pattern mm-hmm. and also with altitude it was so hot this last fall during yeah. the elk hunt I, I mean they worked great I ran yeah. gators in the mornings um, and they worked phenomenal because mm-hmm. they're such a great hot weather piece and they breathe yeah. and you know I didn't sweat in them um, but the fishing line and you know we have a few more pieces coming in we'll have additional um, stock back in so those items that are out of stock back in this spring and then we're going to continue to expand the cool part about fishing is there's just so many different colors of yeah. our palette that we can bring in. We're working on a lot of new stuff. Josh has been hard at work creating new colors and exciting new things for fish and lifestyle. Um, we just have a lot to bring these next you know, 18 months. You're going to see a lot. Another thing that we're, we'll release this um, fall is uh waterfowl nice so the pattern's called flyway we've thrown out a few sneak peeks Mm -hmm. um it'll be ready to go late summer Mm -hmm. um so super excited about that program so with you know waterfowl fish all the different variations of hunt um, lifestyle it's been a busy couple years even though COVID slowed things down we didn't slow down at all no yeah and and that was the thing like COVID gave everybody i think that opportunity to really reflect back in find out you know what the key components of your success are from a manufacturing standpoint and really streamline those because as as you know there were so many supply chain issues obviously nobody was working things got crazy and it was just a really great time for you guys to innovate you know the coolest part um about covid for us was we actually got to stay home for three months instead of traveling to shows we missed everybody it's great to be back but 
you know, it was great to be able to be in that office yeah. where we usually lose three months to be at all the trade shows and do all of our strategic meetings. And so we got to really focus in on a lot of things, um, a lot of innovation, mm-hmm. um, you know, different fabrics. Like you had mentioned, there's so many new fabrics that are continually just pushing the envelope yeah. of performance. And, you know, as you stated, you know, I want to kind of circle back on the cotton thing and yeah. what my dad would hunt in and your dad. And, you know, and it's not that you can't go out and not kill something in camo, right? It's more of the fact that it gets you the ability to stay out longer, be more comfortable, yeah. and which equals success, mm-hmm. right? On every hunt, um, you know, I have a buddy that tracks stats on every archery elk hunt. He's tracked it for seven years. And, you know, really it's about opportunity. The longer and more comfortable you are, the longer you're going to stay out, the longer you're going to stay out. And if you know your areas and you've done your scouting, you're going to have more success. So I'm that way. If I get cold or hungry, (laughs) either one of those combinations is really bad for me. But as long as I'm comfortable and I'm well fed, I'll stay out all day. Yeah. You can have no problem. But as soon as I get cold, um, and you know, it's your feet and your hands, especially like tree stand hunting. Yes. Those, those are the hardest two um, parts of your body to kind of regulate body, body temperature. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you can master those things, you can really stay out a long time. Yeah, you're exactly right. And you know, when you, some of the new pieces we brought in for Whitetail was we brought a hand warmer, yeah. a big thick neck gaiter and a really thick beanie to mm-hmm. help, you know, extend that. But You know, where the technology really comes in is those cold conditions, those wet conditions, the Alaska, Canadian, international cold Mm -hmm. and really extreme hunts. But, you know, overall, we're always pushing the envelope. We have great competitors to push each other. Absolutely. Um, You know, that's the great part is having, you know, fierce competitors Mm -hmm. really drives you to push harder. Mm -hmm. And we're all each of us are always creating something new or, you know, really pushing the envelope. Yeah, and you guys, you know, with some of your warming layers, you're doing a lot of thinsulate insulation, yep. which is fantastic in all climates. So, it, you know, we all know that down, even if it has hydrophobic components to it, it loses its lofted ability to keep yep. us warm in time. And then down breaks down. Yes. It smushes, and after a while, it just doesn't have that warmth component. And you guys are, are doing some great pieces in thinsulate, which, you know, has that synthetic capability. So if it does get a little damp, it's still warm. Yep. It doesn't break down the lofting capabilities. And, and so you're open to using both natural and synthetic, yep. um, which gives people, hey, man, if I have a preference, I want to use this. I, you know, some people are diehard down users. Yep. And some people are like, hey, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to go with this synthetic and it, and it, you have cho- choices for everyone correct each of them works in a different environment yeah. right you know uh, so if you're just literally in a downpour rain for days in yeah. alaska you know eventually your down's probably going to break down if you get wet yeah. and that's where that synthetic insulation mm-hmm. comes in um also you know if you're washing your down a lot if you get your clothes dirty yeah. a lot you know the more times you wash it you're going to strip that hydrophobic properties off mm-hmm. of the down and eventually it's going to start matting and it's mm-hmm. not going to be as warm but get lumpy in your sleeves yes or, mm-hmm. down is the best for insulation mm-hmm. it's lighter um it's warmer it has a better loft but not in wet conditions no. or long periods of usage where it starts to break down you're exactly right yeah so I, that's what I love about you guys. You look at all aspects, you know, waterproof zippers, yep. non-waterproof zippers, stuff that's that's super breathable so that we can have some, you know, hydrophobic com- you know components with a durable water repellent, yes. but still be able to breathe enough to where we're not feeling like we're wrapped in a plastic sack. And, and so your guys' technology behind things. And, you know, people are always asking me, well, what's the perfect rain gear or what's the perfect this? And the, the answer is, is there's really nothing perfect. It, it, it always depends. Yep. So you guys make something for different applications you know if you're going to be heavy rain i always go with coldo like that rain gear to me you know it's not going to tear it's not going to rip it's going to keep is literally an outdoor shelter and um, when i go on sheep hunts or extreme mountain hunts it is a little bit heavier than for example like the jupiter rain gear but to me i'm like you know what I'm, I'm going to pack that extra weight. Yeah. yeah, having that insurance, it is a bomb-proof piece. It's you know it comes fully featured with all the bells and whistles, pit zips, yeah. the adjustable hood. Um, you know, being you know that little extra for yeah. that those you know last thing you want to do is rip rain gear in the backwoods. You know, backcountry oh, when yeah, it's raining toast. or cold. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, you know, each, everybody's different. Every body type I've learned is different to where some people run hot. They mm -hmm. would run it, rather run a thinner puffy and rain gear than a heavier puffy and rain gear. And that's mm -hmm. the great part is we have something for everybody's mm -hmm. kit. You know, you should be able to go through and fit whatever you need, whether you're hot or cold or right in the middle. Um, and then layering, we really focus on layering, mm -hmm. you know, so you can layer up and down with three to six pieces. Mm -hmm. so, you know, um, when I designed the altitude line, <clears throat> It was ultimately designed to wear everything together. Yeah. Like you just start adding as you go. And we've evolved the, the altitude line. Um, you know, that was another thing that COVID really messed up and we're working on getting, you know, some additional new pieces coming in and that and some focus there. Um, fabrics were really super hard to get during that period. So yeah, everything's continuing to evolve. There's always new great technology yeah. to stretch, you know, puffies, which I call them our shy cot. Um, you know, that's a really neat feature to wear. Mm -hmm. You know, the worst part about a puffy is when you layer up and you do have rain gear on, it starts to constrict. Mm -hmm. And that shy cot has really taken that insulation and given it some stretch in the shell. And now it's comfortable. Yeah. Um, it is a little bit heavier. And that's the, the different things with technology is, you know, you always are going to give up something to get something. Yeah. If you're super, super breathable, um, really technical, you're not going to be overly durable. Yeah. If you're really, really durable um, and not overly technical, you're going to, you know, lose some technology in it. Mm -hmm. So um, we just try to find that middle balance. Mm -hmm. I've always tried to ride that, you know, that durability and technology line and try it where it matches, you know, on the graph and, mm -hmm. you know, really focus back into making sure that we're as close to both as possible. Yeah. So do you want to pull a piece or two yeah. and, and we'll um, uh, kind of give people like a rundown of some new garments? that you guys have come out with for this year because I'm super stoked about so this is pieces. I'm gonna talk first about um, our lightest puffy yeah this, this is, is the amazing. LDAX yeah this is a super cool piece it's thin insulation and this um, is like a feather hood. light yeah like feather yes. feather light it is super light yes it's super light um, but once you layer it with a shell mm -hmm. with the thin insulation in that it's super warm mm -hmm. um, it's not gonna be as warm standalone as the Lycos um, but really close but once you you know start layering up and down with a shell mm -hmm. or you know rain gear or something it's going to become really well warm um, a lot of people run this in lifestyle I saw a lot of jackets oh, bought yeah. in this yeah. um, it's got a really cool pattern on it but it comes in transitional Highlander Skyfall and then we've got Knox um, and Sage in it mm -hmm. so we've got a, a couple different patterns some solids for the solids people out there so a couple of the fit things I really like on this coat is it has like an elastic wrist cuff yep. so for me some of the bigger bell cuffs yep. they fall over my hands and it's kind of annoying or I have to try to velcro them this has a nice kind of elastic wrist cuff which is super nice and also a hood I love having a hood there's something about being able to zip up my coat all the way get some warmth around my neck and for a, a you know a lower end piece um, we do have adjustments on it so you mm -hmm. can really cinch that down um, you know this is a great piece we we developed that Josh really took it originally was our uh, based around our Lycos without a hood when we first came out mm -hmm. with it and we had so many people asking for that piece because our, our normal Lycos, which is one of our number one selling puffies, has evolved a little more. Yeah. Um, this just gives you a lighter option to where you don't have to be super, super cold weather, but you can layer it up and it, it stuffs into its own pocket. You can unzip the inside pocket. Yeah. It's got a lot of features. And it's thin solid insulation, so it is yes. synthetic. So it's kind of that all weather and it's super light. I can't stress that enough. It's so light and packable. This is something like for me, if I'm elk hunting and, you know, Yogi and I moved to Wyoming and it is so flippin' steep in some places. Yeah. You know, we get out and it's freezing, but I start cold and, you know, you sweat and you yep. soak through your shirt. And he laughs at me because the first thing I do, and he's always saying, someone with a spotting scope is going to see you one day. But the first thing I do is take off my shirt and my sports bra yeah. and to sit down in glass. And, yeah. you know, I've someday if somebody gets pictures of me lord i apologize um but it's the first thing i do is i cool hang your that, core yeah I, I take that stuff and i set it out to dry in the wind and then i put on something warm like this yeah. i never i try not to hike in my warm stuff because yeah. i do tend to get a little sweaty and yeah. so then after that stuff has some time to blow around in the air and dry I put it back on pull off that warming layer and i'm good to go but for glassing this is fantastic yep. because you don't you're not like my backpack gets so heavy because i bring so many clothes 
clothes because <laughs> I am always cold. Layering as up and down. As soon as I stop yep. moving, I'm freezing. So um, this is incredible. Are you guys going to be offering this with a pant? We actually have a pant this year, an insulated pant called the Sentinel. Um, it came out last year. It's, I mean, everybody that has used it um, has absolutely raved about it. It's one missing piece that we had in the early days. We redid it and mm -hmm. brought it back out. Josh killed it. Yeah. Um, that was something that Josh really took a lot of time to yeah. develop, and we tested it for a couple years. Yeah. Uh, it's got full zips. So the cool part about it's our like Sentinel pant. It's like a true pant, glassing pant. You can put it on and take it off. Um, Do you want me to grab it or pull your headphones and go grab it? Let's see if I can. Yeah. Hey, I'm Christy Titus, and for the past several years, I've really come to rely on OnX Hunt for mapping both in and out of the field. But now I'm also using it to plan and research units for my application season. OnX has teamed up with TopRet to show you everything that you need for draw odds in most of the Western states. And access to TopRet services is completely free to all elite members. I now have both the power of Onyx Hunt and TopRet to help me strategize my state hunting applications. If you haven't already, download Onyx Hunt and upgrade to the elite membership to access TopRet as well as other great elite benefits. So the Sentinel pant, we reinforced the back mm -hmm. on it and reinforced the knee, but it's got a full zip. On the leg. Yep. So I don't have to take off my boots Correct. when I put on these pants. <laughs> and the neat part about this this pant is it's really designed if with whatever you're hiking on. Yeah. Even if it's raining and it's stop raining, you can layer this inside yeah. rain gear, outside rain gear. You literally can sit down mm -hmm. and, and be warm in, mm -hmm. you know, 45 seconds. Yeah, no, that's great. And I love the full zippers because there is nothing thing that's like a bigger pain if you have on your gaiters and your boots and you yep. have you know like a lot of times I'll just hike with my leggings on under my under my pants yep. and I'll wear um it just depends on what I'm doing but the Valhalla primarily is yes. what I wear and um because they're super lightweight and just comfy but then I can just unzip this put this over everything yep. when I get moving again I'm going and I love this reinforced bum so that's going to be super tough um and and rip resistant so you're you're not going to have to worry about shredding this on sitting on a rock Correct. or a log or you know kind of getting a snag yeah it's great it's also got an adjustment with a little bit of stretch on the back side so you can adjust it up mm -hmm. or down so if you are wearing a couple layers underneath mm -hmm. um, or you can you know tighten it down you're just wearing a Valhalla or even leggings yeah. but this is that that one piece that I'm glad that we had the chance to bring in it's you know it's kind of the one that's missing in a lot mm -hmm. a lot of kits and you know to be able to sit down and be warm like you said in glass oh. if you can sit for for six eight hours in yeah. glass and you have your puffy top on mm -hmm. you have your puffy pants on um you're comfortable it's just mm -hmm. like sitting in a sleeping bag on the mountain yeah well and like this year we <laughs> spotted a bull uh at night went back the next day yogi and i relocated the elk right at daylight within 30 minutes of daylight he was bedded and we literally sat on the hill for i don't know what eight hours yeah waiting for this guy to get out of his bed and it was so cold and it was you know not snowing or raining but it was just freezing like it was just one of those cold days and we had to sit all day and when he stood up um it was right at dark yeah so we shoot we barely got down to him in time for photos and we hiked out till one in the morning but it's because of gear like this that we're able to to wait those animals out and be patient yep that goes back to just staying out a little longer um, so that you can be successful. Yeah. And, yeah. and then this is available in what pattern? Does this So we got transitional, well? Highlander, and Altitude right okay. now. So three patterns. Perfect. It doesn't come in Skyfall yet, but we're talking about maybe bringing that in. Where it is a louder layer, it's not completely designed for tree stand, but it could go under rain gear. Yeah. Um, but with how well Skyfall's been received yeah. in all of the different styles mm -hmm. of hunting, um, I could see that coming back in. Yeah, and that's, you know, that's really interesting you say that for like whitetail. This fabric is what I would say a slightly noisy mm -hmm. for whitetail, which yeah. is why I wear the Vellus. Yes. However, if you put this under the Vellus pant, oh. you're not going to hear it. And you're not you're not going to have to get out of the truck at noon because you're cold. Exactly. That, that, yeah. I've never done that yet, but I 
I can only imagine having our Polar Tech sistered with our Thinsula mm -hmm. insulations. Polar Tech is uh, another brand in the industry that okay. does just insulation, and they actually partner with us. We can get insulation from them, but this okay. was one that, you know, they have a lot of science in fabric mm -hmm. and um, components mm -hmm. and you know Polar Tech, you got Primaloft, you got Thinslet, you know um, Allied Down we use. So all of our insulating partners are phenomenal. The only one that we have a branded insulation on is Lycos, oh, okay. and that's one that we've gone out and really found exactly something that almost looks and feels like Down. Um, and then brought it to the market for ourselves. Okay, that's outstanding. So you guys, the names of these garments are, this is the Sentinel, Sentinel and, and the LDAX. The LDAX, so these are available online right now. Yes. And these are only, these won't be part of the women's collection. So um, for ladies, when you're ordering um, on this jacket, it's got a nice athletic fit. So it's not gonna be super huge, but it is almost, I would say, I don't wanna say it's curvier in design, but I can get this over my hips pretty quickly comfortably so um, it's it's going to fit well even for the ladies yeah. so don't be afraid to order this I am running this one very comfortably in a medium and I might go be able to go small but I'll, I'll probably keep it in that medium just so I have a little bit of layering space yes. um, so even for ladies this is a great garment but you guys will probably have some other stuff in that warm weather category we for ladies with that fit and feel if you're really concerned about that but I am I'm leaving this weekend with this jacket so for whatever that's worth <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going home with me. <laughs> the nice part about the Sentinel for everyone is it has that adjustable waist yeah. so it can stretch out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Also where it has, you know, zips and it's designed to be an insulator, yeah. it'll fit all types. Yeah. This is definitely one thing that you don't find many um, people out there saying, oh, I've designed specifically a women's puffy pant because they're designed to fit over yeah. everything. There is some room so you can layer up and down, but this is, you know, both of these new pieces are great, um, especially to keep you warm. I like this is the pant that I've been wearing a lot for like this layering component that we're talking about is a lot bulkier than this. So I like that this is has a lot less bulk than what I'd been wearing. Yes. And so this is a great new addition to the Cryptek lineup. And um, you know, you guys, I can't personally attest to this one, but I'm gonna tell you, it's going to be in my repertoire this spring and I'll let you yep. all know um, feedback You're on it. And if you have questions, just, you know, shoot me DMs or whatever on Instagram, don't do Facebook because I never answer those. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll be able to answer some questions if you guys have on this these two comp um, specific pieces looking forward to hearing your feedback yeah, on I'm that super excited. Um, it's super cool with the pockets on the front so you can you know if you have a few things in your pocket yeah. you can pull them out put them in the insulated pockets mm -hmm. you know sometimes calls cleaning rags whatever people want i want to, to keep my quick. cell phone from mm -hmm. getting too cold like always keep it in the pocket it's really important yeah. or yeah that's Kind of. I've actually used these on some super cold nights where I've had a puffy and a puffy pant inside my sleeping bag. So if you ever get in those super extreme Oh my extreme gosh, colds, you know how many times I've done that? I'm yep. freezing and I just put clothes on under my sleeping bag. Yeah, so that's also a great a great add too. Can skiing, really, snowmobiling, skiing, yeah. outdoor yeah. sports, hunting, yeah. all kinds of applications. 100%. Yeah, this is great. So what else do you guys have that's new and jazzy? You want to talk about or do you want to talk about Velis a little bit? Yeah, um, let's talk a little bit about Velis. Yeah. Velis was a, a really successful program this year because it's really designed for the bow hunter mm -hmm. in let's the stand. It. Let's grab it off the, um, the at least the jacket. Because I've been running the Velis now for, um, I don't know, four whitetail seasons, I think. Maybe, a little, well, yeah, it's been about four seasons I've been running Velis. I'm trying to think when I, I'm trying to think when we launched Velis, but it has to have been at least four seasons ago. Yep. Prior to this year, though, it was only available in Highlander. Correct. So, like, for me, I would run it in the tree stand in Highlander. It was great. But, I I mean, I, I keep saying this. This pattern, when my Midwestern Whitetail Outfitters saw this pattern, they were all in. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, it's, I mean, it comes in transitional now. Yeah. Skyfall and Highlander, so we have some selection there. But this piece is so incredible. It's yeah. got so many features and functions. Um, you know, you have the pit zip, so it'll vent. So when you're sitting up there, you don't have to take anything off. It also has a removable hood. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's got a zipper here on the back so you can remove the hood. So now we've done, you know, both in one. A mm -hmm. lot of people don't like hoods. Some people like hoods. Yeah. Um, we did, you know, both. It, it, it's a three-point adjustable. So mm -hmm. it'll really snug down around yeah. when those cool. 
Um, you right know, around the back, so you can tighten yes. it around the back of your head here, and then also around the front here, and then the, the neck zips all the way up, so you can go straight to chin. So like on a really cold day, you just crank that coat around your face, and you can still hit all your anchor points when yep. you're drawing your bow, um, but it keeps you super warm. Now this also has a built-in scent control component it does. to it, Aesthetic which for whitetail hunting is, is key. great. Yes, that's key. The aesthetic um, is really incorporated into the fabrics and it gives a lot of scent control back into there. Um, the pockets, you know, you got two hand mm -hmm. pockets, you got a, you know, a chest, chest pocket, pocket on the This on the is front. where my cell phone lives, right yes. here. <laughs> and it, you know, it keeps it warm so it doesn't freeze. You well, know, last thing you want. And the zippers is, are waterproof. Yes. So that's one thing I like about it is, you know, you'll see some garments, they they are waterproof, the, the fabrics are waterproof, but the zippers might not be necessarily. Yeah, they'll do a zipper garage in the front or something. You know, these are all YKK, 100% mm -hmm. waterproof zipper. The fabrics, waterproof and windproof yeah um, the seams are all taped so this is just that cold weather extreme mm -hmm. piece that you need to protect yourself from the elements um, and also be quiet um, so quiet so quiet. like this is my go-to for whitetail if I know you know Yogi and I uh, I mean this is what I live in for whitetail I, I bring this with me um, if I don't wear it I, I typically don't walk to my stand in this because yeah. it is warm it is a warm. lot of times I'll walk to the stand very minimally especially if to it doesn't sound like very far for like don't judge me for saying this western big game hunters but if you have to walk four or five hundred yards to your tree stand and you're loaded up with and your you're gear, loaded you're up you do sweat and yeah. it really it literally takes 10 or 15 minutes while you're walking to get that sweat worked up so i always bring my clothes throw them in a small backpack um, when i get to the base of the tree I throw these on. I already usually have my my tree stand harness on. I'll pull it out uh, my my tail out the back, hook up to my lifeline, and climb dressed. Then I can sit down. This year we had so much weather change. I got caught a couple of times putting on and taking off clothes in the stand. It was yeah. super stressful. But this stuff is so quiet. Even if you are in the middle of putting your coat on and a deer walks out, you can just like whoa, it's okay yep. because the fabric itself is not going to alert. It, it that's what I love. About yeah, it. the brush trico and also the fleece. Yeah. It, it really does help that you know acoustical signature while you're up in the tree. I use this a ton for spring bear because mm -hmm. um, it's similar to white tail. You're sitting in a yeah. tree stand for long hours that you know temperatures changing in the spring so you could go in and it could be 50 degrees or 60 degrees and by the time you climb out it's in the 30s and snowing because yeah. you get those storms that come through so this is a great piece for you know that that cold weather changing conditions mm -hmm. uh love the fact that you can you know use the pit zips so when you're in the Dump stand heat. if you are a little bit warm as the storms kind of come through and you get some sun you can dump some heat, um, really thermal regulate, but just an absolute bomb proof piece of gear. Yeah, and this is great quiet. in the wind. Yes. Super wind resistant. Like we we have been on some hunts wearing this where the wind you know, if in certain garments, um, the wind will just rip right through, right through them. Yeah. And this really is that that bulletproof stop right like no the wind's not getting through it you put it on you're warm you're gonna stay dry um and that's that's really what i love about it and and it's just been absolutely foolproof for me um and 100 percent. and this pattern in the tree this year is it's spot on yeah one of the nice features about this as well is if you take a puffy like that compression fit you had mm -hmm. but then you can and it it sits right inside it and then as you lock it down That's for right. an archery guy then you have that you know compression on mm -hmm. your arm so you don't have to use an arm guard mm -hmm. um, just a lot of really good features and you know a good jacket for a lot of conditions in the yeah. cold yeah, no, I love it. You guys, this is the Vellus, and this is available right now yes. in men's also. Ladies, this one won't be in a ladies fit. However, I've been wearing it for years. It's no problem. The fit is great. On the pants for these, there is like a, a mid zip on the leg, so it'll zip up to basically your knee. Um, you can get the pants off and on without taking off your boots. Yeah. Um, I sometimes just take them off, especially when we're in rubber boots. Yeah, I'll quick, just, you can just yeah, them I'll on just and slip off. my boots yep. off and then and pull the pants on. But um, so there is a leg zip, a lower leg zip on these pants, and pockets in the legs. So you have pockets like on the thighs, on the legs, so you can slip your phone in there, your tissue, or whatever you want. Um, so this is a great set, you guys. Available now. Um, I think I'm running this in like a medium, so that I can layer underneath. Yeah. Yeah, it's, you know, in those in those colder weather pieces, you do get a little, you know, room to be able to adjust. Yeah. So they tend to fit, you know, ladies and men's. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. This won't come specifically yet 
in yeah, a lady's cup, okay. but it works really great yeah. for both. Yeah, I love it. I wear it out to just see my mules or whatever if I'm farming and it's a cold day outside because if we get any like sudden weather change, I'm covered. Yeah, the great part about this is it's just one jacket with insulation mm -hmm. and waterproof and windproof together, so you can just throw it on and go out. Yeah. You can also layer up and down with it. Mm -hmm. um, but this has been a really big success this year, especially back into the whitetail market um, and you know the archery market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I think even adding this with the Velis is going to be a really big success because this is so lightweight. Yeah, that Eldax with that, I haven't specifically wore it yet, but that would get you through some pretty Oof, good stuff. Some really good stuff, yeah. yeah. We, this this fall, we went through some hellacious temperatures that were so cold. And, yeah. um, you know, you almost can't wear enough clothes. Like, I mean, you just want to keep putting them on. And that's what this stuff is all designed to do on those days where the cold is just absolutely bitter to keep you super warm. Absolutely. So tell me about your move. You oh moved my from gosh. Oregon to Wyoming where, you know, we're neighbors on both sides, but tell me about how you like Wyoming. How was the move? Um, how do you like the hunting there? Yeah, so we did what we call like this year a cash out season. So we went back and forth this year between Oregon and Wyoming, wow. just a ton, trying to cash out my Oregon resident yep. points while cashing out also my Wyoming non-resident points. So we, we were successful. I cashed in 16 years of points in Oregon for antelope. Wow. Got a freak antelope buck. We had a great I saw hunt. that. was incredible. Awesome. And, and you know what we love about it is, um, you know, my husband obviously is a foreigner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love you, husband. You're, you're a foreigner. Um, but so he did not have equal hunting opportunity in Oregon that yeah. I had um, because the point creep is so significant. Yes. And you guys in Idaho still have a lot of general hunting. Yep. We did not really have that in Oregon. And so it just got to a point where we looked at our life and what we love to do. And for our sure. marriage to have equal opportunity, we're like, hey, let's move to a state that has a lower population, a, a better fit for our lifestyle so we can live live this whole lifestyle as a, as a married couple. We both went to Wyoming. I cashed out um, my deer points for mule deer. He cashed out his deer points for mule deer. So we both harvested really awesome bucks. We packed my mules in the back country and, you know, just did this epic adventure. And that's why we moved there. We wanted more of that. And then we both, he, <laughs> a yogi went and found whitetail for us. And um, we, you know, whitetail habitat in Wyoming is really tough to come by on public. Sure you know he did some great scouting and we did tons of scouting while i was elk hunting we found some really cool whitetail spots we both got whitetail bucks i got a great bull in wyoming um all of it over the counter and um and and, and just so much opportunity for us where oregon was just like meh, meh. yeah it's you know and we won't even go in on the political climate yeah. but Wyoming and Idaho, um, you know, some of Utah, some of this still mid, mm -hmm. you know, Western strip, you know, Montana, there's just some incredible opportunity yeah. to hunt right out your back door. Oh, yeah. You know, Adam Weatherby, you know, he moved to Wyoming from California. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of companies coming out of, you know, other areas mm -hmm. more into that Midwest strip. And, you know, I was born and raised Idaho, so I've been spoiled my whole life. Yeah. And you are lucky because you've had so much general opportunity yep. to go hunting. We, this year we get to bait bears. Um, we could be hunting mountain lions in Wyoming right now, but yep. we're, you know, we're trade show seasoning, but it's something that we can do every year yep. and we don't have to be rich to do it, you know? Well, and you know, you have the opportunity to do yeah. it. Therefore you're going to take advantage right. of it. And when you're, you know, playing the point system and yeah. you have to put in for so many different areas to make sure that you feel the pipeline of hunts, mm -hmm. Wyoming's really going to open that door to you to be able to do a lot more versatile hunts without yeah. having to plan two, three, four no. years out, cashing in points and all of that. Well, so, as a non-resident, Wyoming elk is like five years for general now, wow. which I was, I think, right at five years when I drew. Um, and, you know, to look at that and know that I have the opportunity. I mean, I we harvested a great bull. Um, it was in hellacious ground. <laughs> like, I mean, the, the thing in Wyoming is, is sometimes you really have to want to go where other people don't. Um, and yeah. so we, I invested this year. I bought two more mules. And... <laughs> I the like backcountry in Wyoming yeah, is the real deal. It is super um, hard. Idaho's got some great, you know, backcountry. Um, coming from Oregon, I'm sure that was a really welcomed opportunity because yeah. you do a lot of horse hunting in yeah. Oregon and in Idaho before. And Well, in Oregon, know, the trouble was is I had these mules, and they're so awesome. But our hunting opportunity as far as drawing tags in Oregon was so... Um, 
like <laughs> didn't even occur, that they sat around a lot, yeah. right? Like I didn't use them, you know, once, twice a year. I'd take yep. them on a trip. And, and for us moving now, we get to enjoy more of the lifestyle I grew up with yep. and, and get to do it more like when I was a kid. Yep. Summertime, spring, yes. summer, fall. I mean, really, you get to incorporate You're li- that. Year-round. Year-round. Yeah, because spring bear, you yep. have turkey. Which I won't be using the mules for turkey, but, you know, for spring bear, Yogi and I are, are looking at putting in, in some zones that you have to pack bait in. Yep. Because not everybody wants to put that much effort in for a bear. I mean, when you got to pack a couple thousands of bait in, pounds of bait on yeah. your back, which I've been doing in Idaho for years, um, it's it's yeah. an investment, yeah. right? And and it's great to be able to keep predator mm-hmm. control down. And you know we're you know Idaho and Wyoming are one of the few last states that allows still to bait. And you know a lot of people ask me, mm-hmm. you know, why do you why do you bait bear? That just seems you know like shooting fish in a barrel. It's All not. I can say is go bait bear and yeah. the time and effort that yeah. goes in prior to and then sitting the cold days yeah. in the stand and really absolutely quiet, no mm-hmm. acoustical signature, smell. You know, you have to scent proof all your clothes. Mm-hmm. You got to make sure your stand set up downwind, pattern the bears. Um, it's not easy. Yeah. So, and not only that, but I mean, you might have lots of bears coming in, but is it, uh, the, are you being selective? Correct. Is it the, shooter, the bear that you want boar, to harvest? Yeah. Yeah. A mature bear. Yeah. And that's the thing is, you know, always as we hunt, we try to take mature yeah. animals. Um, but Idaho has a big bear problem. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of bears, a lot of black bears. The cool part is you see a lot of color phase. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've seen everything to blondes, cinnamons, browns, blacks. I mean, you just got a really cool phase in Idaho yeah. of, of bears. And so it's really unique. You really, you know, a lot of times you don't know. And during the rut in Idaho, you don't know what's going to show up. Yeah. You know, well, they're and, roaming so much. And that's the thing. And in, in, it's such big country. Uh, they can move around. They have, you know, they're they're moving in the spring for breeding, yep. and um, it's so much fun. And and people, I think, don't uh, understand how difficult it is to harvest a mature boar sure. because they're very smart. They become nocturnal very quickly. And if you make one mistake on a big boar, you'll never see them again. You're never going you to see them again. You might not see them again for three years or That's ever right. again at all. And during the day, exactly. Yep. Yeah. No. So we're we're looking forward to that lifestyle. You guys also have the Eastmans on on your pro staff, which yes. I mean, those guys for generations. have have been the epitome of backcountry hunters. Yes. And um, I am so thankful to call their same state home. Yep. And, and I'm sure they hate people like me. They're like, oh, I'm moving to Wyoming for hunting. They're like, stay out of Wyoming. Wyoming sucks. It's really windy. You guys don't want to live there. Okay, <laughs> But um, it's, you know, to know that guys like that trust their hunts to Cryptech also, it speaks volumes. Yes, we have a great collab arrangement with them, co-marketing. Um, they're great guys. I think personally, you know, if it wasn't for the Eastman's family, yeah. we would have a very different video and magazine type, you know, industry right mm-hmm. now. I mean, Gordon really was doing video before anyone. Yeah. And they have evolved that into such a really unique opportunity for first time hunters, people that haven't hunted. The information that they're yeah, willing to give out um, is incredible. So there's no reason that if you're in the industry and just starting, that you can't find information from all kinds of you know people out there but eastman's just create a great program they um, did the best seminar i've ever seen Hey everyone, after successfully using Rack One Big Game Peanut Butter and their super yummy PB&J in my spring bear baits, I'm really excited to share with you guys two new premium bear attractants from Rack One. One is Picnic Basket and the other one is Jelly Donut Flavors. Like every good Picnic Basket, this tantalizing blend contains a variety of irresistible snacks and treats to whet the appetite of any and all bears that come within range of its powerful, alluring aroma. The carefully blended mix of fruits and nuts and other secret ingredients put out a picnic spread and long distance scent trail that'll have the big fellows inviting themselves over to a party. I think it's safe to say that we all love donuts and that bears will also love to wake up to a yummy donut. Rack One's Jelly Donut is an aromatic mix of fruits and nuts blended with Rack One's secret ingredients formulated to lure bears in where you want them. The aroma is intense and nose catching even at long distance and will send the snack signal 
far downwind. All the Rack 1 flavors are sure to lure them in and can be placed wisely near trail cameras or your hunting stand. The rest is easy. All you have to do is make the shot. So they did a seminar here last year at the Life Member Breakfast. Yes. And they did a, a PowerPoint of Gordon Eastman at 50, 60 years ago yep. hunting. And it was Isn't the that phenomenal. It was the coolest thing. But you you look at how digital TV media has changed since then. It is mind blowing. Even in the last twelve months, it's media consumption has changed so much. So fast. Yeah, I it's mean, hard to keep up. Downloads and people, you know, people want it now. They want it yeah. now. You know, if you remember in the early days, you would film all fall and you wouldn't release until the following fall. Exactly. I mean it was a twelve month cycle. Yeah. And uh, you know, social media mm -hmm. and YouTube and all these new platforms have really created it. So you, I'm sure it's made it a lot more difficult and you know, also for us, you have to be constantly creating content. Yeah. People well, want and it also hard is, you know, I have all my, my fall is filmed from last year. Yeah. You know, I had these episodes sitting there and it's like, well, as a content creator, do I just edit them and release them? Yeah. Or do I time them? You know, one, what I've been doing is one a month. and then, But then now you have all these reels and people want they 15 want to 60 yep. second, you know, they just want to feel that vibe, yep. you know, while they're sipping on coffee at home, you know. It's great because, you know, the more clips you produce and the more tips yeah. or, you know, kill shots and kill reels and all kinds of stuff, um, you know, people are consuming data at a higher mm -hmm. rate than before. Um, you know, Eastman still puts out a great, um, editorial mm -hmm. print media yeah um, you know that's the kind I grew up with that yeah. I grew up reading those stories mm -hmm. you know my dad and I would you know we would go when they would launch their videos you know every month or every two months we would get it and we'd watch it you know on the old VHS tapes I mean there's it the industry and really the world's evolved in content and data um, yeah. but and you guys have doubled down and brought in some really talented uh, media creators yes. doing some more in-house videos and um, you know I think the whole point of, of all of this media that everybody's doing is we all just want to be in the backcountry yes and when we're not there we are all in some shape or form addicted to watching it. We yep. think about it. I mean, we're using tools year round for scouting, like on X, yep. you know, we're scouting year round digitally and virtually um, checking draw odds. I mean, that's that time of year right now. And we're doing all of these things because it isn't just a season anymore. It's a lifestyle. It's not hunting season anymore. Yep. It's a hunting lifestyle. Exactly yep. right. You know, and it, it's super cool because, you know, in the early days, you know, you get that short little fall and yeah. then you're back to work and everything else. And now there's so many tools out there, mm -hmm. you know, really to help your success rate, but also live that lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, we talk a lot about lifestyle by design. And this is definitely something that we've designed for our lifestyle and, and, you know, live it, breathe it every day. You guys are coming out with more lifestyle gear as well this year, correct? Yes, this year is going to be an awesome year. Um, Josh just put together, uh, I believe it was five new graphics specifically for shows. Um, we will bring a few into the store, but we've got... He's got hundreds of designs that are waiting to get in the hopper. So you'll see a lot more lifestyle from Cryptic this year. Um, really unique flares, um, hoodies. Uh, lot, you know, we've got Richardson cap, flex foot, flex fit, and then also um, outdoor cap mm -hmm. that all have hat blanks. Um, working on bringing the new patterns in. So a lot of really awesome opportunity to, to you know, wear Cryptic as a lifestyle instead of just hunt. Yeah. I wear it 24 hours, 24-7. It's bad. Like, I mean... I never get I'm dressed up at these shows, right? Like this is dress yeah. up. But when I'm at home, I'm wearing leggings and rubber boots and, and Cryptek. Like that's just, or, or, you know, hiking boots or whatever. I mean, that's just how it is for me every day. I'm shooting my bow. We're shooting guns. We're ranching. We're farming. Uh, we're scouting. And, and it is a lifestyle. It's not just, okay, I'm going to wear this jacket once a year and, you know, for a season. It's, it's something that is a good part of my life year round. Yeah. Yep, couldn't agree more. It's uh, it's something that I've enjoyed sharing with my kids. Yeah. Um, bringing other new hunters in, you know, we get to, we get such a unique opportunity at these shows yeah. to talk to people that have maybe just got into hunting or haven't really been in hunting, or people that have been in hunting their whole entire mm -hmm. life and get to share stories. 
the wild sheep you know foundation has done just a phenomenal job on yeah. conservation and putting sheep back on the mountain um you know idaho did a giant initiative this year where they tagged 250 mm -hmm. sheep plus um constantly going out and i got invited on one and it got canceled because the river was frozen there was so much ice on the river they couldn't take the jet boats oh, up geez. in riggins but i was really looking forward to that i i know i got another opportunity again yeah. this spring but conservation you know hunters are conservationists conservation. you know i see you talk about that a lot yeah. you add a lot of stats in but if it weren't for hunters you know helping with conservation constantly put more money back in to save the animals that we love to hunt mm -hmm. um you know so that part of being the lifestyle and these shows that we do we do these to give back to conservation yeah. Yeah. um and that's you know that as you say the gamut of shows that we all run to mm -hmm. for the spring that you know we we hate it but we love it it's a oh, love-hate yeah. relationship 100 percent love it yeah and it is good i mean that's we're here so that the next generation of hunter and the next generation of wildlife has it better than what we have. And in the work that, you know, you guys have been tremendous supporters of the Wild Sheep Foundation and so many other nonprofit yes. organizations across the board. Um, and, and that is what it's, that's what it takes. We're all here. Yeah. At, it's a free market conservation um, arena right now and nobody's forced, nobody's taxed. We're all free will giving our dollars to help improve something. Um, and that's really profound. Yeah, extending the legacy of what our fathers and grandfathers and great grandfathers came here for and to enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, the outdoors. Well, so this show, the theme is uh, come for the sheep, stay for the party. Yep. And oh boy, it is a party here. It is so <laughs> much fun. If you guys have not been to the Wild Sheep Foundation Conservation Expo, you guys got to come here. You guys are also going to be at Hunt Expo this year. You yep. were already at Dallas. Yep. So for those of you that have never looked at Cryptech, you want to take a look at Cryptech or if you're a diehard cryptic wearer and you want to see what's new, um, the shows that you guys can find them at would be like Dallas, Sheep, Shot. Well, yeah. co consumers aren't open at Shot. SCI is one that uh, a lot of people, you know, on the east side, Midwest, yeah. um, SCI hasn't been back mid-east, um, you know, that Midwest. Mm -hmm for I don't know how long since yeah. I've been doing this. So it's a really unique opportunity. We're gonna have our booth there at SCI, nice. like you stated, the expo. Mm -hmm. um, we have a local Idaho show that's actually really big. It's yeah. pretty unique there, you know, for the local Idaho mm -hmm. crowd. So, you know, there's a lot more out there that we selectively do. We have a crew at ATA right yeah. now. Um, but, you know, we really try to focus back into that conservation mm -hmm. piece and the big groups. Yeah. So you guys, if you're wanting to get your hands on Cryptech, that is the fastest way to do it. Otherwise, get online, go to cryptech.com or for the ladies, you can also shop this summer where? It's Sisterhood Outdoors. Sisterhood Outdoors. Um, I can't wait to get acquainted with those women. I'm, I'm very excited about that. We're expanding the tribe of ladies that are a part of the Cryptech family. So that's really awesome. And I, I invite all of you to join us in that. Uh, so so stay tuned July ish probably we're gonna have some new ladies stuff out in the meantime you know check out some of these other pieces get online to the website check out our lifestyle yeah. um, our all of your licensees yep. um, there's tons of gear and products out there that are also patterned in cryptech and that's really fun to take all the gear and make it just awesome and um, fun to wear and cool to own and functional so absolutely um, thank you so much for spending your time with me here absolutely thanks for yeah. inviting me and uh, you know, we have a great customer service team. If anybody ever has questions, okay. um, they can call in at any point. We have a, you know, size fit guarantee. If something doesn't fit, send it back. We'll send you a new piece out. So, yeah, thanks for having me yeah. on. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll have a great time at sh the yeah. show. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us for this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. Coming at you from the Wild Sheep Foundation convention at the Cryptech booth here in Reno. And uh, we hope to see you all here next year. Thank you for listening to the Wild and Uncut podcast. If you would like to hear more, be sure to subscribe to my Pursue the Wild digital series on YouTube and follow me at Christy Titus on Facebook and Instagram.